Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this stenciled fault line cake that featured some bright spring floral and some chocolate palms. So if this sounds interesting, please stick around. So I purchased this silicone palm mold at Hobby Lobby, I believe, but I have seen them on Amazon as well. And what I did was I just melted down some turquoise candy melts. You can use chocolate. Um, you could use fondant even if you want to with some Tylose in it or some gum paste. Just press it in there and, um, and let it set up. And you can do it that way also. But I thought for this first try with this mold, I would use some candy melts. And what I did was I put it in there and then I... Um, tapped out those air bubbles is what I'm doing there when I'm banging it on the counter because you don't want air bubbles in your finished product because that will be on the surface of your palm and you will definitely see it and just go ahead and remove the excess using a spatula or a scraper that is whiter than the actual mold or the palm that you're trying to scrape the ester off it's just a lot easier if you have uh, a scraper that is wider than what you're working with. That way you're not removing too much. Then I put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes to set up. And then I just scraped off the extra around the outside perimeter of the palm. I just find that easier when it comes to removing it. You can smooth it after um, you get them out of, the mold, out of the mold, that's easier. And here you see, this is what I was a little concerned about with these molds, is you have to pull the mold away from the chocolate and that stem part is very fragile, but that's okay, we can fix it. We just melt down a little bit more of the chocolate and glue them together and just remove those little extra pieces. And that part right there is actually gonna be hidden by your decoration, so don't worry about making it too clean. And this is what they look like before I do my little petal dust on them. I'm just using a pink petal dust. Actually, it's a, a, a luster dust because I wanted it to have some shimmer. And I, this time I wanted to do some brighter colors. So I'm doing this turquoise and some pinks and some corals uh, and some yellows. And I think it's really springy and bright and fresh. I like to mix it up. One week I'm gonna do something a little bit more modern. The next week I'm gonna do something a little bit more contemporary and, or not contemporary, but bright and cheery. I like to do different things. I don't wanna do all the same stuff all the time. So if you notice there's a pattern, it's intentional. <laughs> And I just dusted around the outside edge of the palm just to kind of emphasize the shape of it and to give it some dimension. I don't know about you, but I like these colors together. Now we're gonna get our cake ready. This is four layers of six inch rounds and I am just filling them with American buttercream, which I will link in the description as I always do, just to make life easier how I make this buttercream. It'll be down there at the bottom. Click on that if you wanna know how to do this. And I didn't bother to put a dam because this time it was a little cooler this day when I made my buttercream and it wasn't, it was a little uh, firmer than what um, I end up with when we have more humid conditions. But this day was cooler, so it was a little bit more solid. So I didn't feel like I needed to. If this was for a wedding or for an order that was actually gonna be picked up, I would dam it because you know, settling happens when things move. And to prevent the settling and the bulging, I always do a thickened dam when I'm doing an order, a cake for an order. Now just go ahead and remove the excess. This is just your, your crumb coat. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to lock those crumbs in. And set it in your freezer for 10 minutes or your refrigerator for 20 minutes to firm up. And then I'm going in with an all over color of ivory. I don't know why, but I was in an ivory mood that day. So I'm just putting it on and then removing the excess. And don't mind my mess in the background. I had three cakes that I was working on this day and it's kind of hard to find enough space to hide what I'm working with as I'm working on something else. So that snuck in there, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll see those on another video that I'll be working on here soon. And then just go ahead and smooth your buttercream since you will see the top about third-ish of the ivory. Just make sure that that top is, is good. If the bottom is not perfect, well, it's going to be hidden. But, you know, just do the best you can. Now, I have this stencil that I wanted to use. And I chilled the cake first. Put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes to make sure it's nice and firm. And then I used the same buttercream. I just added a little pale pink to it. I was going more for a little bit of a... Um, 
what's the word, not ballet pink, but a dusty pink. And then I find that I have kind of changed how I do these stencils. Um, I'm holding it in place, but I'm starting in the middle of the stencil and working my way out applying this buttercream and doing up and down. And that way it kind of holds itself in place while you work with the outside edges. It just makes it a little easier. I don't know why I didn't do that a long time ago. And then use your scraper to remove the excess. Kind of go with your pattern on your stencil when you're applying your buttercream. If like on this one, the um, pattern is more up and down. So I apply the buttercream up and down. Otherwise, sometimes if you go against the pattern any more than that, and any more than you have to, you can kind of get some seepage underneath your stencil. But also have your buttercream kind of at a peanut butter consistency when you are applying it. You could do this with royal icing if you'd prefer, but I find that buttercream for me works just fine because in between panels, in between sections, I go ahead and I freeze it again to make sure that I'm not gonna mess with that buttercream that I did on the first go around. And then just remove a little extra from the top there. And there are some spots where the two colors or the two panels met, the two different times that I applied the stencil, but that's okay because it's gonna be hidden with flowers and with this fault line. Get creative with your decorating. If there's an imperfect spot, which inevitably in a cake, there's going to be, hide it with some decorations. And then I just piped on an irregular line with this turquoise. I want, wanted it to be kind of diagonal and irregular. And then just remove the excess. You don't need it real thick. And before it's set up, I went ahead and I just kind of threw some dragees at it. My theory on that is, Whatever sticks, stays. <laughs> Just throw it at it. And it's easier to put them on when your cake is not crusted. So go ahead and do these right away. And the same thing with this um, fault line perimeter line. I went ahead and I added these before it crusted over. And what I'm doing there is I'm sticking my finger in water and then dabbing it into the dragees. You'll see that more with the smaller ones. It's, with the smaller ones, it's easier to do it that way than try to pick up one little one little drage at a time. With this size, you kind of can. You can use um, pliers. There are cake pliers also that you can purchase to um, put your beads on there if you want to do it that way. But I don't know. I just I could I didn't know where they were. I didn't want to look for them, so I just used my fingers. Just make sure that your hands are clean and dry as always. And then I w went ahead and I put it in the refrigerator again for another about 20 minutes to let it firm up. And then I'm going to start attaching my decorations. Now be very careful with this fan slash um, sail, whatever you want to call it, or palm, when you're putting it in there because you don't want to break that chocolate. And I kind of pre-drilled a hole with that um, tool there, that my gum paste floral, I think it's a banner, um, just so that I wasn't pushing any harder on that chocolate than I needed to be. And then I'm just using little, some um, piles of buttercream piles. That's an official term. Squeezing some <laughs> buttercream on the cake, squeezing it on the cake. That's another one. You know what I'm doing. Just to attach the flowers. Now these are artificial flowers. You can use real flowers. You can do sugar flowers if you want. I would prefer sugar flowers, but um, I don't have the time. I do this all my days off, so I kind of have to use what I have. And I, this way I can also reuse floral when I use the silk. And you know, nowadays the silk flowers are actually really pretty. These are new ones. I did purchase them for this cake because of the color palette, but you can reuse ones you already have. Just wash them, make sure they're clean and dry and reuse them again. It works really well. And I did go ahead and decorate behind the palm also. Um, if you're doing this for an order and they're gonna see all sides, you might wanna go ahead and take the extra time to go ahead and decorate the back also. And to hide that little spot on the side, I did some creative flower placement. See, all gone, can't see it. Now, I did go a little overboard with the flowers. I usually do, but this time I definitely did that intentionally. I wanted to have a lot of flowers on this cake. I wanted that to kind of be the punch besides the chocolate decorations. And those are not real baby's breath. Trust me, I know. Do not use the real ones. I 
I've been told. <laughs> and here's our final product. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, give it a go and tag me on Instagram if you post anything. And please take the time to like, subscribe, share, and do all the things. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.